45. Write the half reactions and the cell reaction occurring during electrolysis of each molten salt below. And then we have chromium 3 bromide, which is CrBr3. So we're undergoing electrolysis. We have a molten salt, but all I see here is just a metal and a nonmetal. And remember, a metal and a nonmetal is always an ionic compound. So we could call it an ionic compound, we could call it an ionic salt, but it's ionic. It has charges. So that's exactly what we have to do here. The first thing is we have to find what were the charges that made up CrBr3. Well, it definitely came from chromium and bromine. And now we can use these subscripts. There was one chromium and three bromine, and I could crisscross them up to find out what the charges were. There's one crisscrosses up telling me that the bromine was a negative one charge. And then this three crisscrosses up telling me that the chromium was a plus three charge. And that's a great starting point because what we're now going to do is this is your starting material for your half reactions. Now notice how I don't care that I have three bromines here. Um, it will come together at the end. So I don't like to add the three bromines here. I just like to start from scratch. And that's what we will do. So we have Cr plus three and Br minus. And we want to bring them back to their normal state, AKA just not have a charge. So Cr three plus is gonna just go to the chromium um, atom and Br minus is going to go to the bromide atom, so Br. Now before you do anything, just Make sure that do you have any diatomics here or, or an element that would form a diatomic under standard conditions? Well, chromium is, a, chromium is a metal and no metals are diatomic, so that's out. But bromine is surely a diatomic because you could think of Brinkelhoff, right? Does that ring a bell? That helps you memorize your polyatomics and Br is one of them. So I have to put a two here. Now what we're going to do is, I notice that I have two bromines, so I'm just going to balance the element first by just putting a two in front of here. Now let's balance those charges. Let's start with the chromium first. I see that I have a plus three on the left side and no charge on the right side, so that means that I have a zero charge. Remember, you always add electrons to the more positive side, bringing you down to the negative one. So it seems, like I would just have to add three electrons to bring the plus three down to a zero. Let's do the same idea for the bromine. Here, I have an overall negative two charge and no charge here, so that's a zero. I have to add it to the more positive side, bringing it down to the negative side. So it seems like I would add two electrons here to bring it down to the negative two. Now, if we wanted to figure out which one was the anode or the cathode, remember the anode is always the one that has, not the anode, the cathode. The cathode is always the one that's gaining electrons and that is shown by having electrons on the left side. So this is the cathode, that's your reduction. And then since you have electrons on the product side, that means losing, so that would be your anode. And now here are your two half reactions. But if we want to find that cell reaction, remember you have to make sure that these electrons are the same number in order to add up the equations, but they're not. I have three electrons for one of them and two electrons for the other. So I have to multiply these equations to come up with a common electron value. The closest value, what do you think? The closest value two, you know, from three and two would be a six, right? Because I could take the cathode number and times it by two, that will give me six. And I could take the anode and times it by three, and three times two is six. But then you gotta be fair. If you're multiplying this by two, I have to multiply all the other substances by two, and the same thing with this for the three. So that's why I said, you know, the, the numbers will work out in the end. So since we have to change both of them, I'm going to just raise this up a little bit and I'm just gonna rewrite the equations down here. So the new cathode would be six electrons plus two 
Cr3 plus yields two chromiums. And then the anode would be, we have six Br minuses, yields three Br2s plus six electrons. And now since we have the same amount of electrons on both sides, I can cancel them out, and then I add the two equations together. So these go bye-bye. I'm going to add the two equations together. So anything that goes on the left stays on the left. Anything that's on the right stays on the right. So we have 2 Cr3 plus plus 6 Br minus yields 2 Cr plus 3 Br2. And now let's just add some states. So anytime that you see that you have charges, those are always in the aqueous phase. So aq, aq. And then for this side, you just go back to what they are standard. Chromium is a metal, so that's going to be a solid. And since bromine is a diatomic, Br2, you just have to go by their rules. And bromine is a liquid at standard state. So I have to put a liquid there. And now we are done. And just before I sign off, I'm just going to state one more time that without the multiplication is your uh, half reactions. So without timesing it by two or timesing it by three. And then this is your overall equation. Okay, what do you think? Thanks for viewing the video. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel and I hope you're all having a great day. Keep studying hard and I will talk to you in future lessons. Okay, bye-bye.